не трогать ничего. Okay, so I think most people are back for the uh, afternoon now. There might be a few late latecomers. Um, the next talk today is by Shmuel Prince from the Claret Health Service in Israel. And the, the, it's the Diagnostic Challenge of Rare Diseases, Lack of Knowledge or a Leaking Event. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. And thank you for coming to my lecture about the Diagnostic Challenge of Rare Diseases. My name is Shmuel Prince and I am internal disease specialist for more than 30 years. Practicing medicine for so long evoked my great interest in the diagnostic field. Another reason was my public health training and uh, experience in using data mining tools for health policy. In the past few years I have been exposed to the rare disease fields. I devoted a lot of time to try solving one of its main challenges, the late recognition of rare diseases. Before I present my solution for shortening the diagnostic process, uh, let's start from the basic. <coughs> As you know, the journey towards rare disease diagnosis is called diagnostic odyssey. It is long and full of difficulties for rare disease patients and their physicians. The average six person spends near five years until getting an accurate diagnosis. Studies in the past decade conclude that the big spot mainly delaying the diagnostic process is outpatient care. The apparent reason for it, it was considered to be a lack of awareness and knowledge about rare disease amongst primary and secondary care providers. That is why many efforts are invested in their training, in building online, data, online database for rare disease and so on. But little has changed. Why? Why? Uh, what is truly the reason? Doctors worldwide, even in developed countries, miss the possibility of rare disease repeatedly. In my opinion, the root of his problem lies in the diagnostic approach dominating contemporary health systems and guiding physicians throughout their career. Or as the famous saying describes perfectly, when you hear the hoofbeats, think of horses not zebras. The scientific base for this approach is classification algorithm. It is one of data mining methods for categorial items. It group unique. 
objects in classes based on their features. It's going to accurately predict the class for each case in the database. In medicine, the case is our only patient. The case patterns are the symptoms and signs, and the class is our medical diagnosis. I must say that classification is not exclusive for medicine. It doesn't matter where, uh, whether you want to identify who is the artist of this artwork or what disease does this man with chest pain suffer from. In all this case, we run the same process in order to classify the object. That is why I'd like to use a simple example from everyday life. Let's say I just returned from the farmer's market with a big fruit basket. Inside I have oranges, apples, peaches, and pears. I left the basket on the kitchen table. I kindly ask it my grandson, who doesn't recognize fruit uh, types yet, to bring me an apple. So I told him to bring me a fruit that is green, round, and smooth. He, uh, what, uh, what has he do? Take a fruit and decide an apple or not, a, uh, not an apple. He may use several ways. The first is the growth of the round ones by shape, so he excludes the, pear, the pears. Then he takes out all the green ones and finds the green apples. To complete classification of all five, uh, four fruit types, we must differentiate also the rough core fruits from the smooth ones and thereby divide oranges from peaches. The second way to classify, to classify is by grouping all the smooth fruits, so he excludes the oranges. Then, by taking out all the, uh, all the round ones, he excludes pears, and from the round, smooth fruits, separated the green ones, thereby finding the apple I wanted. Eventually, to classify all four fruit types, we need three different patterns. On base of this, uh, of the three patterns, we can build six different classification trees, or by the more specific name, classification <coughs> algorithm. A differential diagnosis for a patient with chest pain can derive from 80 different reasons. From this simple, uh, simple fruit example, we can deduce that the number of diagnostic ways for this patient will be almost endless. But what, what does the number of algorithms matter when the result is the same? In an ideal world, it doesn't matter. But what happens in the real life unusual case? Let go, uh, let, uh, let's go back to the kitchen. Today I pick it from at the farmer's market a new type of green oranges. And I, uh, and I can ask my uh, grandson, can, uh, uh, say, uh, say, uh, say, 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 Using the first classification tree will cause a mixed up between the apples in the second step and green oranges, and the mismatch will occur. But using this, our second classification algorithm will keep the division correct. In current medicine, symptom recognizing in in a simple recognition is almost never perfect due to problem in communication with the patient, bias of laboratory testing, and so on. So on. Uh, therefore, we get many imperfect 
classification algorithm. And we as doctor find the problem of choosing the best one. Uh, which is the best? Naturally, modern medicine chooses the common room. Doctors tend to give a diagnosis more common as those illnesses occur often. We follow the maximum probability concept. And this way excel in recognizing common diseases. However, we as doctors are more prone to be indifferent to, uh, toward mismatches, like our green oranges or our zebras, like rare diseases. Rare diseases are not the only ones in the mismatching community. They also underdiagnosed disease, uh, diseases. They can, uh, they can be common disorders with unusual symptoms. They can also be diseases said more prevalent in some other areas, but rare in others. For example, thank you for my college from Mexico. For example, a, tra a traveler infected in Mexico, Mexico and like the non-tropical country, may develop chronic Chagas disease and also go through the same diagnostic or the same. That is why a group rare diseases under diagnosis disorder under the same category, neglected diseases. They are called this way not because they are neglected by physicians or by health system. They are neglected by our way of thinking. The important conclusion from all this is that to succeed in diagnosing the rare and neglected disease in primary care, we need a separate diagnostic approach. Likely, we already have in it in the pattern recognition toolbox. We have know it and use it. I ask, I ask you to read the, this phrase. The <laughs> uh, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> you may? Yeah, the phenomenal power of the human mind, according to a research at Cambridge University, it doesn't matter in what order. <laughs> But you successful read part of part of this sentence. How is that possible in all the board a scramble? Yes. somebody somebody know? Yes sir. Phenomena is wrong. The, the spelling, I think. No, there is no spelling. Uh, first, uh, first, 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 uh, first uh, and last letter yeah. is saying to re, uh, to write word. Uh, late uh, letter of word is the same, and uh, uh, text uh, help help you to read after. Uh, to understand. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. The, uh, this is this is not is not important. Well, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, impo uh, the important element here is your previous experience in English reading. What is so unique about this method? We correctly read this text. Even those most of the letters are mixed up or even false. We don't know exactly how we do it, but clearly the success derived from our personal experience. This specific characteristic that we sometimes can be even describe, a carve it into our memory and allow us to identify our relatives in childhood photo, mm. to read text in, ha in handwriting, and to brilliantly diagnose a rare disease we once handled before. Scientifically, this approach is like another data mining method. It's called network learning. However, it's not the computer making conclusion. 
is a conclusion okay. of human brain. Implementing this approach is the basis of revolutionary medical startup up I founded and named Neglected Disease Collaboration. I am proud to call on stage Jan Prince to present LDC. Please save your question to the end of our presentation. Okay, thank you, thank you, Dr. Prince. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Jana Prince. I'm the Marco Manager of NDC, Neglected Disease Collaboration. Now, um, I also happen to be Dr. Prince's daughter, so uh, you can see why I uh, really love my job. <laughs> now, let's uh, rewind a bit and go back to how NDC even started. So, after years of researching the rare disease diagnostics problem, Dr. Prince deciphered the ultimate solution for diagnosing rare illnesses. It's called NDC, Neglected Disease Collaboration. And we are about to launch it today, right here, right now. Now, before we do that, I have a question for you. Did you ever struggle to diagnose a patient for a long time? If so, raise your hand. Okay. It could take months, could take years. Were you frustrated with difficulty to find an expert doctor who might help? If so, raise your hand. Well, you are not alone, doctors. Many physicians are in the same boat. That is exactly why the reason Dr. Prince founded NDC, Neglected Disease Collaboration, that uses the great power of medical crowdsourcing in order to shorten the diagnostic odyssey of neglected diseases. Now, as Dr. Prince mentioned before, and I forgot the name, talked about it before, some neglected diseases are very common and well known in some countries, while scarce in others. That's why they may be unrecognized for a long time, just like rare diseases. That is why a collaboration of doctors worldwide is needed to identify those illnesses and shorten the diagnostic period. Well, every undiagnosed case is like a riddle, and each doctor has the unique experience and talent in order to decipher a riddle of one patient or another. Have you ever diagnosed a patient that has a rare disease? Even just one time, right? Then you're welcome to join NDC, and your unique experience might end patient's diagnostic odyssey somewhere in the world. But what is NDC exactly? Neglected Disease Collaboration is a website with an online community of doctors from all over the world from all medical fields, allowing physicians to discuss patients with complex cases and unusual symptoms in order to obtain the right diagnosis quickly and efficiently. In its first stage, NDC will help diagnose children which are prominently affected by neglected diseases. But how does NDC exactly work? Well, we found a creative way to show. Doctor, are you having trouble diagnosing a sick child for a long time? So we're on the same boat. I'm Dr. Odysseus. When I was struggling to diagnose a sick child, I heard about NDC. I logged on their website, and they offered me to go on a short journey that will end my patient's diagnostic odyssey. My journey began by posting the boy's full story on the case board. Doctor crew members on NDC saw my patient's case and started discussing it. Some offered me a diagnosis for the child. connected me to the closest expert medical centers where I could check the best diagnostic assumption. And it worked. The diagnosis was confirmed, so I shared it with my crew members. NDC helped me bring my patient to his new home, the right expert facility that treats his now known disease. Doctors, we made it. So, Doc, when are you going to end your patient's diagnostic odyssey? 
join us now. Okay, so let me simplify that for you. Now, uh, NDC has a unique way of medical crowdsourcing. You can either be the presenting doctor of an undiagnosed child's case, an NDC, or be part of the physician team helping to diagnose it out, the crew members. Each doctor goes through a diagnostic oxy timeline that takes his patient through five steps, from an undiagnosed patient to, an, to a patient with an accurate diagnosis. Let's go by the steps. Step number one is called Captain's Word. Every doctor's odyssey starts with presenting the child's case. Now, NDC believes that the accuracy of the answer of the diagnosis lies in the quality of the presentation, which means that a full, enriched presentation of the child's case is required. The second step is called A to Navigation. This is the Q&A part. This is the part where the presenting doctor uh, has a primary discussion with his crew member physicians, allowing doctors to ask questions and get answers in order to get a better picture of the case. Step three is called All Docs on Deck. This is the diagnosis assumption part, where the crew member physicians are able to privately send the presenting doctor their suggestions, suggestions for a diagnostic assumption. NDC relies on a method where doctors directly identify illnesses based on their previous experience with a similar case. Step number four, Anchor's Watch, is a diagnosis verification. By this part, the presenting doctor chooses the best diagnostic assumption, and NDC refers them to the closest expert medical center that can check it. NDC is developing connections with expert facilities all over the world primary and secondary care physicians will be able to reach out to coordinary care without having to deal with all the bureaucracy and hierarchy usually involved. This is profoundly important to shortening the diagnostic process. Now, the last step is called the shore, nostos, which is Greek for homecoming. In this step, as the doctor confirms his diagnostic assumption, he must publish it to his crew members so they will know exactly what was the diagnosis thereby ending the patient's diagnostic odyssey and bringing him to his new medical home, the right expert facility that treats his now known disease. Well, all this was just the first part in NDC evolution, in our vision. NDC's current form of discussion is based on a unique method that will ultimately create a team, an international team of doctors specializing in neglected disease field those doctors are able to present and solve undiagnosed cases quickly and successfully. NDC will eventually open its doors to the mass crowd that will be able to hire the services of these collaboration members based on the doctor's location and site ranking. By that time, NDC will allow showing adult patients as well. Now, we do realize that medical crowdsourcing will only bring us to the right assumptions. The important point is that NDC will refer these doctors with these right assumptions to be checked in high-level national undiagnosed diseases networks. That, why, that is why collaboration between us is necessary. Our great vision is to create a new medical subspeciality, neglected disease diagnosis. And these doctors' core activity will be founded in our neglected disease collaboration. So we are thrilled to officially announce the opening of our website, ndcmedicine.com. It's the beta version, but doctors are welcome to join for free. And there is an authorization process to identify that your doctors, because your doctors participate in, in our Congress, your authorization will be accelerated. So all you have to do is just Google our URL and join us. And uh, basically, all that's left to say is uh, when are you going to end your patient diagnostic odyssey? Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's that's good question. Question. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions?
of uh, non uh, non-violability of dates. You can uh, you cannot use it now. Yes. What kind of uh, information the clinician put in this website? You know, like uh, blood yeah. test or exactly or test, X-ray shots, yeah. uh, description. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Yeah, like the, anything that can help, anything that can give information, because really one of the principles of NBC is, um, is uh, quality presentation. This is one of our basic uh, uh, core. Uh, principles, and that's why the more information, the better, because it might spark someone's memory that once yeah. seen this picture test before, and make him recognize that illness. I, I, I'd, I'd be curious about that. If you're going to have people who have quite a lot of information about patients, how are you going to get around some of the systems which are meant to exclude people doing that? For instance, in the NHS, if you take something on an NHS computer, you can see it. If you remove it to another system, it's encrypted. Yeah. So how are you going to get around that issue? Not you, you can't sort of release data. Uh, the identifying uh, details of the patient will will stay anonymous, even to the doctors presented. Its name, its these type of, of data will be confidential since the, the beginning. I'm, ju I'm just wondering how you'd have to get even just like flow photometry data. Yeah. If it's on an NHS system you will struggle to export it to anything that's not an NHS system. I can tell you that now because we, we have that problem all the time. And, and uh, one assumes that's probably the same in the US as well, that it's very, very difficult to export data to a non clinical Well, the issue too is that because it's a rare disease diagnosis, by virtue of it, you almost identify a patient or a family yeah. who has that rare disease. So yeah, you could do that now in my field. Yeah. Okay. 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 I understand the question. As, uh, you, you say that, that is in for, uh, for confident for patient, uh, he, he or she uh, doesn't want uh, to uh, to say uh, for all over. Uh, pa 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 patient, uh, we need uh, we need nickname for patient. Only present, uh, only only present, okay, only present from uh, uh, this is fine. Uh, okay, uh, from uh, all uh, documents, all dates, uh, present doctor have to uh, uh, who have to sign uh, the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They have to sign. No, I, I sort yeah. of appreciate that. I was just playing devil's advocate, saying, well, if, if someone has to do that to put a case up. That's actually quite a lot of work to actually anonymize something that comes out on printed reports from a hospital. If you have a printed report or you have a report on a, a computer, it's going to have an awful lot of data there that you'd have to black out. And I'm just curious about, you may have to go through some regulatory authorities to actually discuss how you might be able to report this data. That is something. Yeah. And I think that's uh, seriously needs to be printed, 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 this is only part of a uh, good presentation. You have uh, you have to uh, you have to to, to present uh, uh, um, images and laboratory dates. Okay, okay. Yeah. Exactly. The user is the restricted rules most restricted most restricted uh, could I, could I, uh, I think I'll have to call a halt to the conversation there because we need to move on to the yes. next uh, presentation. That's okay. Thank you very much for being Thank you so much. Uh, so the next talk is Alice Abdel Ali, and her talk is on hereditary.